Oh, hello there. You just caught me at the pond feeding the ducks. Welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. My name is Shin, and welcome to the series. A huge thank you to my Patreons, such as Chad, Justin Glenn, Tater Tots, and Nolene Miller. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. And of course, my wonderful YouTube members. So you may have seen in the intro, we've done a few decorations to the underground bit beneath the military rise. And I'm going to show you exactly what's going on there right now. Okie dokie, put this bread away because there's no more ducks. Oh, now that reminds me, I put an order in for 64 steaks over near the tavern. I wonder if they've arrived yet. It will probably take the cook quite some time to make the steaks. Oh no, there we go. Fantastic. Ah, so come with me past the flower shop, if you will, to a world of underground beauty. So there's a little bit of decoration here. I've added a path that comes by parallel to these two houses that we have here. And if we take a right turn here, we're going underground into the cave section. Whoa, look at this. Now this area is a bit of a danger zone at the moment because monsters could spawn here. So that's why we're going into the computer looking up mega torches. There we go, we've got one left. And I was thinking to myself, where were we gonna put this? And I figure, well, let's put it in here to make sure absolutely no rude dudes spawn in the cave section. So there's a bit of a raised area here and a balcony with like a, a guard rail. And down there you can see is our stone smeltery and our glass blowers hut. Now I've measured things out and this area up here is perfect for around three more houses. And below here we have enough room now for both a nether mine and a normal mine. Which will be good for getting us even more iron because we'll need that if we want to get better guards and better armor. And of course, the nether mine for things from the nether. Now, that's not all. If we take a look at our resource scrolls, you'll be able to see that our builders are completely built out. That's right. Almost every single building now on the colony is level three. And that is fantastic. But don't take my word for it. Let's go over to the warehouse, go into the town hall, and I will show you that there are no more work orders to do. Yeah, check that out. Is that not amazing? And also, if you look at happiness, things have improved even more. Green lights across the board, apart from guards, social factor, which is, uh, I guess, sickness, unemployment, homelessness, or starvation. Aha! Once we get some more houses, that will get fixed. And also injuries, I think that's probably because I knocked someone off a wall. Whoopsie daisy. So let's head on over to home and get crafting some of these buildings that we're going to be putting in our underground area. All right, all right. So we're going to want houses. Now, I might actually have some houses already in here. Oh, yeah, here's two. Oh, no, it's just one. Bamboozled again. But it's a cheap recipe to make, so I reckon I can get a couple more. There we go, three houses. We also want a mine. And I have one spare mine, it looks like. But also we want the nether mine. So how do we make the nether mine? I have a feeling this is going to be quite tricky. Oh, no, it's just obsidian. Which we have. Boom, the nether mine. So that's the nether mine, the mine, and three houses ready to go down. Before we do that, of course, we're going to go over and have a look at research because there's always something to be done over at Harvard. Now, because we're not doing level four research yet, there isn't much left. And if we look at technology, we've got Podzol chance. That's a bit pointless. Oh, wait, open the nether. Oh my god, we can't even build the nether mine yet. We have to do the research first. We'll need three gilded blackstone. But with three Gilded Blackstone, 128 seeds, and down civilian, the cakes that we need for festival, we should have three more researchers that we can take care of, no sweat. So let's get to it. Now I asked the post box over here for some cakes a while ago. Are we gonna be in luck? Oh no, not quite. What's going on here? Nine cakes, post box, recipe, cake. Ah, uh, it could be sugarcane, I believe that our Plantation isn't quite keeping up with sugarcane. Now, we did the research that said that we could have two more crops over on the plantation, but we never, oh, look at this, loads of cocoa beans. Don't mind if I do. And there we go, lovely stuff, loads of cocoa beans. So yeah, one of you guys in the comment section bailed me out big time and said, if I go over here to the plantation block, go to settings, and I keep scrolling beyond sugarcane, it will say two crops at once. Wait, what? Oh my god, you guys lied to me. Maybe I have to repair it. But either way, this guy is growing sugarcane and that shouldn't take too long to get done. Oh. 
give them a bit of a helping hand. So okay, yeah, it remains a mystery as to how we're going to get the plantation to grow more than one crop, but maybe fixing the building might fix that issue. Oh, rise and shine. So are the cakes here yet? Come on. No. Oh, so the delivery is happening. Loads of these are on their way. So I guess we're just waiting for that. We'll need seeds. I probably have seeds in the, whoa, 1,000 seeds in the uh, in my old computer. No sweat. And of course, three gilded blackstone. So what is gilded blackstone and where do I get it from? Gilded blackstone. Aha, uh -huh. so it's blackstone surrounded by golden nuggets. But where do I find blackstone? Okay, so the nether miner can find it. Piglins can barter for it, but it looks like it's something that we find in the nether. So I guess strap yourselves in, put your best clothes on, your best set of armor. We're going to go looking for some blackstone. Oh, there we go. So there's six. So we're in for three more. Let's take out these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's Anna with the last few cakes, I hope. No, where are you going, Anna? What the hell? Oh, she's probably delivering uh, books and paper to the library, of course, because old Tobin Belmont has got to study. Ah, oh, so there we go. So while we're waiting for these cakes, Nuki has finished repairing the plantation. Maybe this has worked. Let's go and find out. Everything looks okay over here. And if we go to the plantation settings, ah, oh, ah, oh, so it did work. All we needed to do was repair the building. Fantastic. So we can select sugarcane, cactus, bamboo, sugarcane and cactus, cactus and bamboo, bamboo and sugarcane. So we can't do double sugarcane, but what we can do is sugarcane and cactus. Wait, what? What's going on? Oh my. What? What? What the? The Dickens? But it just. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, there we go. Sugarcane and cactus in the bag. It's fixed itself somehow. And that's what we want going on. Because we'll need the cactus for dye and the sugarcane for obvious things. Aha, delivery at the post box. This must be the cakes. Thank you very much, Bilbo. Whoa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cakes? How many do we ask for? Either way, 9 is good enough for us. Let's go and get this research underway. So it's going to be down civilian. We're going to go for festival. More happiness. Always good to have. Then down technology with the seeds. We're going to go for dung. Farmers harvest 15% more crops. That's very good in the long run. Wait, oh no. Requires mines totaling at least four levels. Aha. <clears throat> so what else can we do? Well, it's always easy to go down combat and pick something from here. So we're going to do arrow piercing. And that leaves us with arrow piercing and circus for the happiness underway now we need to go to the nether get the gilded blackstone so we can do the nether mine research boom and our nether portal is of course inside our house not the safest of places but you know what actually the nether portal comes out a lot like a really crappy place take a look wait how did you get here what the hell no wait it's not safe for you come back oh my god is that my raccoon oh no he's on oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, oh no, that's a terrible, a terrible situation, but case in point. This is a really crummy area for us. Oh, unless that's Blackstone. Is that Blackstone? It could be Blackstone. But yeah, this is a really bad nether. What we want to do is dig up the nether portal, go home, and put it somewhere else. But not before we've dug up this black stuff, because it could be Blackstone, right? Okay, moment of truth. Is this stuff the real juice? Yeah, it is. It's Blackstone. Oh my god, amazing. And there's a shroom loin. Now, if I remember rightly, these guys were fine until I started digging something up. So I've got to be very careful here. And there we go. Oh, whoa, whoa, over a stack of Blackstone, just the ticket. And let's get the hell out of here. I don't like the Nether at all. And in better Minecraft, I mean, honestly, they should rename Better Minecraft to Better Minecraft, Worse Nether. Because the Nether sucks. There's just so many more ways to die. That doesn't make something good, right? Oh, it's dark. Let's have a sleep. Oh, man, though. Rest in peace, Rocket Raccoon. You will be, you will be missed. I don't know how he made it to the, through the portal with us, 
But yeah, oh, sad times, dark days. So, Gilded Black Stone. And there we go, six Gilded Blackstone. Let's get this research underway ASAP because I really want to do the Nevermind this episode. Here we go, what's up, dog? NMU, research, technology, and then down here, open the nether. Boom. Now, I also want to get a mine because there's a couple of things in technology that are locked behind having level four mine. And that really suggests to me that the game thinks you should really have, at this point, more than one mine. So, we've got some buildings now. A mine houses the nether mine. Let's get the build tool and go and map these out inside that cave section and plan the future of our underground colony. Oh, now hang on a sec. Looks like we've got Tilly Poutine is taking a look around our underground cave to check it out. What do you think, Tilly? It's a great piece of uh, architecture, isn't it? Yeah. And I'll have you know that I built all of this while watching the movie Tenet, because I think it's one of my favourite movies. Okay, build tool in hand. Let's map out where we're going to put these houses. Now, I planned out roughly this should be the size for many, many houses, and I was very careful to make sure it goes up tall enough to work with a level 5 house. So, no. No. Summer. Summer, no. No. Summer. Sorry about that, you'll have to excuse me because the dog almost stole my glasses. <laughs> the problems of having a pet. Oh my god, she chews everything. Anyway, now, Citizen Medieval Oak, level 1. Yeah, looking good to me. Now we're going to make this level 5 and push it back a bit. And you can see that there's just about enough room, just about enough room, for the entire house to fit. We're going to squeeze this over to the left. Now, we could maybe do a reverso here to give it a bit more space. Yeah, let's give it a bit of a reverso. There we go, reverso flipperuski. And, yeah, boom. So we'll put this here. And there's enough room here for us to do one, two, three, all the way along like this. Oh, yeah, look at this. Like a glove looks amazing. Wait, these are on the right level, right? Yeah, looks good to me. Tick the box. That looks absolutely perfect to me. Yeah, boom. Pull the trigger. And that means we've got three houses now ready to rock. And we also, as luck would have it, have three builders with no work to do. So how about a bit of a race? Let's see who builds their house the quickest. We'll do Ginger, Alyssa, and then Nuki. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first international house building contest. And our champions today are Ginger the Rat, Alyssa Jack, and of course, Nuki the Slayer of Burritos. Man, yeah, so Ginger has a slight advantage here because she's got a couple of diamond tools that we gave her. But it's still anybody's race because actually she's kind of been the slowest to start with. Maybe she had a very full inventory. Now you guys are probably wondering why it's very bright inside here and that's because I took a potion of night vision just so that you guys can see what's going on much easier. Otherwise, it's a very dark cave and all you can see is a whole lot of nothing happening in the background. But it does look like at the halfway point, Alyssa and Nuki are the ones pulling ahead with Ginger trailing behind slightly. Can she catch up at this late stage in the build? I just don't know. Bada bing, bada boom, and it looks like with one house down and two to go, new key Slayer of Burritos is our winner. So maybe we have to rename him Slayer of Buildings, because honestly, he plowed through that like an absolute demon. But also this doesn't bode well for Ginger. She was our favorite builder, but this is just an embarrassing showing from her. I'm not quite sure why she is taking so long. I'm sure it's just a quirk of what she's currently got in her pack, but she is trailing so far behind even Alyssa, that I just don't know. But either way, now that all of these houses have reached level 1, we can go in-game, queue them up to be built to level 2, and then while that work's going on, we can start thinking about where we're going to put our mine. So here we go. Now you'll have to excuse me because I've got a few more minutes left of night vision, so for a couple of minutes, or well, 1 minute 30, this cave is going to be pretty bright, much brighter than it usually is. So, build options, and we're just going to set all of these, doesn't really matter which builder we use, to upgrade to level 2. Mm. And there we go, 30 seconds remain, so that might actually be enough time for us to get a better idea of where we want to put our mine. 
So we've got the nether mine. Aha, now there is a slight problem with our nether worker or our nether mine. And check this out. So there's only two styles of nether mine. There is Caledonia or there is wooden. Now let's take a look at both before we seal the deal on one of them. Oops, there goes night vision, but it's not too bad. Oh, in fact, actually, because the silhouette of a building glows really brightly, it's almost better to build these in darkness than it is in light. So, oh my god, this looks really cool. It's like this wooden walkway that goes all the way to another portal. And uh, yeah, I guess the idea is he doesn't really mine. He goes into the nether to gather the things. Man, this guy's going to be quite an adventurer. And it goes from level one, two, three. Oh my god. What the hell is this stuff? Warp wood? Four and five. Man, there's some real exotic materials required for this. And I think that is an end rod or an end candle right up top. So what about the other style? Caledonia. Now, usually we're going to go with medieval oak. But because we've only got two styles here, we might duck out and use Caledonia. The big problem with Caledonia is it uses all kinds of different types of wood. Look at this. There's birch, oak, spruce. And that makes things really hard to build. Also, the Caledonian Nether Miner is a little bit bigger. Or is it? No, it's a different shape. So we'll raise it up. And it goes from level one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Now this looks a lot, lot neater. So the question remains, do we bite the bullet and build our first Caledonian style building? Well, you know what? I'm gonna say yes. It's going to be the only building on the colony that is Caledonian, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We can come down here and micromanage the specific requirements for the build and not have to worry about the whole colony needing the Caledonian resources. So we're going to go back to level one and say yes. Now, because we haven't done the research, we cannot get this building built yet, but we can at least put the silhouette here and come back to it in future. So there's one more thing to build, and that is the miner. Level one, medieval oak. Now, how big is, oh my God. This thing is actually freaking huge. Now, is it gonna fit? Let's turn off dead space. So what about medieval oak alternative? It's kind of the same size, but it looks a lot neater. And actually also, it looks just way prettier. Yeah, you know what? This could be a good spot for our Medieval Oak alternative mine. So what does it look like at level one? Pretty simples. Okay, yeah, I'm happy to pull the trigger on this. So we're going to use our new favorite builder, old Nuki. And as soon as he's upgraded the house, he'll get started on a mine over here. Boom. So all in all, I am very, very happy with my new underground cave section. We now fit three houses in there and two nether miners. There's a bit of dead space, but honestly, you kind of want a bit of dead space on your colony. That's what's going to keep it feeling like a, an actual living, <sighs> breathing town and not just like a really condensed grid section city. And you know what? That's the difference between, I think, American towns and cities and European towns and cities is that one of them was very well built for like a traffic system, like in grids, and that's great, but it's a bit ugly. Whereas if you come to a city like Bristol, I mean, it's a bit more pretty. It's got like a bit of quirkiness to it. The roads are all weaving and winding and random, but the flip side is the road systems also suck and there's terrible traffic at all times. So I guess it's, you know, swings and roundabouts. So let's also go around and upgrade the buildings that we don't yet have to level three. That's going to be the Archery Range over here. And then the Knights Academy as well. Now these are important because, yeah, we discovered there's a few researchers that need the academies to be level three. So what do these guys need? What are they waiting for? Is there anything we can help them with? Cake. Should we cancel the cake request? Because I think we're kind of done with that. Jamie wants bamboo. Of course he does. The warehouse wants charcoal. The stone smelter wants dark oak log, but but why? Oh, I think he wants dark oak log because he's making charcoal. Let's go scope that out. So here we are. This is probably one of the most important buildings to actually set to uh, priority recipes, like warehouse stock, so that he doesn't just use the recipes that he has to make charcoal, which is dark oak log or oak log. 
he uses the one that he can best afford. And in fact, let's teach him all the kinds of logs that we have. So we have like a few spare birch. And there we go, now we should use the most appropriate log for the job. Let's go scope the warehouse and see what our current stocks are like. Yeah, we have loads of coal, man. So much coal, loads of cobblestone, oak wood and oak logs. Whoa, man, look at all this clay. Oh, of course, that reminds me. So I was curious last episode and I went to Harvard to try and find the research for the different kinds of meshes. And I forgot to tell you dudes, but when I looked at the wiki, it said that the building had to be at a certain level for the meshes. So basically, when the Sifter's Hut reaches level 3, that is when it automatically unlocks the next set of meshes. And unfortunately, this miserable bad boy is still only level 1. We've completely forgotten about the Sifter, and it's kind of been left to rot here on the coast. Well, no more. So you know what, I guess while we're kind of waiting for all this to happen, and we need something to do, I'm going to find out what this metal helmet on the map is. One of you guys in the comment section said that this is a boss, one that we can kill pretty easily, and he drops gear that is even better than Neptunium. So while we're waiting for our builders to do their job, let's go and take a look. Now, probably the best way to get to this Iron Helmet dude is via the quarry cave section over here. This probably opens up and branches off towards this bad guy. I'm kind of a bit lost. Maybe we should have put like a waypoint down. Oh, hello, is that diamond? Yeah, diamond and emerald. Sweet Bix, very nice. Aha, uh -huh. whoa, this place is massive. Love it, love it to bits. So where is this iron helmet? It was roughly where the X is and oh my God, that's right in the middle of this giant lava pool. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, you know what? There is no dark helmet to be seen anywhere. Hmm. Hmm, what do we do now? Ah, oh, you know what? This whole thing is very silly. What I really should do is just go up to the surface and dig down where the helmet is. That way we'll definitely find what we're looking for. So X marks the spot. And I know the famous saying is, don't dig straight down, you'll regret it. But you know what? I don't think I will. Not today. So we're looking for this iron... Oh my god. Oh sh... Oh no. Oh no, don't, don't tell him I'm here. Oh, I don't think he's seen me yet. Just back away. Shh. Get out of here. Oh my god! This thing's freaking crazy! Oh, so it looks like he has an iron sword stuck in his spine. Do you reckon that's... Ooh, I reckon... Oh, you know what this is going to be? This is going to be like a Ludix Gundir thing from Dark Souls 3. We're going to pull the sword out and he's going to come to life. So what I'm going to make sure I do is have an escape plan. Yeah, always have an escape plan. Boom. Now, easy does it. Let's just go around the front, make sure he isn't just asleep. Oh shit, oh no, he's asleep. Oh no! He wasn't, he wasn't dead, he wasn't asleep at all. Oh, are we supposed to try and like take the uh, iron, the diamond sword out? Let's give it a go. We're gonna dash around, try and grab the sword, then run back into our hole. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh no! Ah! All right. That happened. Let's try that again. Can we survive that drop? Oh my god, I think he's right there. I think we I think we can survive this. I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh. Oh, go go go. Hi. Oh. Oh my god. Is he coming? No, he's stuck. Oh, okay, thank god. Get the Amazon spear out our bow and let's see if we can kill him from afar. Here we go, boom. Okay, this isn't working really, is it? Um, what about the spear? Hit and run? No, that ain't working. What are we supposed to do? How do we kill this guy? Lava? 
It could be lava. Oh my god, this thing's very cool and very terrifying. Okay, now this isn't foreboding at all. We've just surfaced right in the middle of the graveyard. Wow. Convenient for when I need to be in here after this wrought naught has completely destroyed me. Okay, here we go. I mean, it's it's pushing him. That That's a thing. But it's not doing anything else. Ugh, okay. Uh, what else? Let's try the whole lava arrows thing. Okay, here we go. Shooting through the lava at the wrought naught. No, it's just tinking off him. What the hell? How do we deal with this wrought naught? Now, there was a weak point behind him, right? Where the sword was. Let's go and take a look at that. Yeah, so here we are. What are we going to do about that? It's a sword stuck in the back of his thing. No! Oh, what is going on here? Why is this not working? I mean, this guy is very, very, very cool. For like a Minecraft mob, this is the most, impre oh, the most impressive boss I've ever seen. But what are we supposed to do here? Now, I do think that that sword stuck in the back of him must be a clue of some kind. He's very slow, so maybe I can just, like, wait until he attacks, and then when he when he slowly attacks, I can run behind him and whack him in his weak spot. Let's try that. Okay, come at me, bro. Okay. Oh, that works! Oh, my God! What? Oh, my God, we did so much damage to him as well. Okay, this is going to be easy cheese. Come at me, bro. I think you're tough. Okay, it's when the axe comes down. No, bring the axe. There we go. And slam. Ooh. I think just one of those is going to kill me. Oh my god. Oh. oh, he is a beast, isn't he? Bring it down. Oh, okay, just a couple more hits. One more to go. Ooh. No! Oh my god, I was so close! Oh my god! Oh, he comes with a backswing as well. Oh. Okay, lesson learned. I think I know how to defeat him now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you come back too soon, he brings the backswing around. Oh, man. <laughs> Montage of deaths I can see coming on this episode. Oh, my God. Oh, the frustration, the woes. But honestly, this is just like Elden Ring, right? The harder a boss is, the more time it takes to kill him, the more fun, the more rewarding it is when you finally do. So it looks like if he hits you with his axe, it's an instant kill. Oh, no! It's an instant kill, regardless of what your armor is. So you could kill this guy if you were naked, if you wanted to. Oh yeah, luck lucky double. Oh my god, the lucky triple. Oh my god, he gets like a phase three? Now I can't get around him. There we go, got it. Oh, very close now. Just one more hit. Oh, this is it, this is it, the final hit. Oh, oh my god. Oh. It took us so long. It took us embarrassingly long. But oh my god, check out this sweet, sweet, sweet loot. Axe of a thousand metals. Never breaks. Right click to attack in a large arc. Shift right click to slam the ground and create a shockwave. Oh my god. And my helmet broke, but no worries. I've got a new helmet. Oh my god, this helmet's yellow. Wrought helm never breaks. It's only got two armor, but... Oh my god, 10%, what is that icon? Move speed? And the axe, oh my god, the axe of legends. 
Oh, can you imagine this? Versus a horde of barbarians. Just land right in the middle of them and go, woomph. Oh my god, you would take them all out completely. Well, my dudes, that is it for this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. This episode, we did the research that gets us the nether mine. We built a huge underground area beneath our military rise. Got three houses there, a normal mine, and we've laid the foundations for the nether mine itself. Next episode, the research will be complete and we can start building the actual mine. But of course, in between, we just slayed the Ferris Rort Nort boss number one in the chain of better Minecraft bosses. So I'm going to sit back, have myself a nice lovely steak, and look into which boss is the next in the chain. Thank you for watching, and of course, a huge thank you to my Patreon members and my YouTube members. You guys are freaking amazing. And of course, if you are still watching the episode, I want you to put in the comment section which is your favorite boss of all time from any game. For me, I think it could be Lady Unalesca from Final Fantasy X, but let me know which is your favorite boss in the comment section. And until next time, take care.